bait for the day, as I said, really, really simple. I've got myself some lovely, normal screttins type coarse pellets. Yeah, they're fishery pellets up here, which I'm pretty sure Ben sells screttins up here. And what a screttins coarse pellet allows you to do is to put water on it and leave them. Yeah, there's no need for this um, draining them off, soaking them, uh, draining them off after a certain amount of time, uh, squeezing all the water out of them. With a, a screttins feed pellet, you can cover them in water. And at the minute, the batch has been so good for the last probably year, that you can just allow them to soak up all the water that they possibly can and you end up with a lovely uniform um, pellet that's softened all the way through but it's also gone to its maximum size so they're really really big i mean they're, they're probably they're pushing a three mil pellet they, they've gone really really large but more importantly they've held the shape yeah at the minute the pellets are great they're not breaking down to a mush so it allows me to feed pellets that actually stay as pellets on the bottom which is really important because i want them to, to match my hook bait i don't want them to be to be a ground bait unless that's the thing I'm trying to achieve but with my pellets so I want to feed pellets and I want to fish pellets so in contrast to that though I have also mixed up a little bit of ground bait this is a, a proper like a little edge I've had pretty much over the years with f1 fishing in that when it gets to, to really really hard to rock bottom as I call it just by adding the tiny tiniest bit of ground bait often it'll just kick start your peg a little bit. And when I mean tiny, I'm talking ridiculously si tiny, probably a ball the size of a four or six mil pellet. That's how small it sometimes needs to be, just to kick things off, just to make them fish a little bit more excited on the really hard days. So we've done a little bit today, hopefully they're not gonna need it, but I'll, still, I'll talk about why I'd feed that and when, just to push things off. And ground bait for me is always exclusively, when I'm pellet fishing, a crush pellet variety. I just want plain, boring, crushed pellets, either crushed pellets or expanders. Normally, I'll just rock open a bag of, me, uh, bag of XP, which is just crushed, um, crushed expander pellets, and that'll give me a lovely, fluffy mix. If I mix it, in fact, let me just bash a bit up really quick. I mix it in a bit of a funny way, if I'm honest. Not a bit of a funny way, a bit of an odd one. If I stick some of them in there. Like Blue Peter, this, isn't it? chuck some in and I almost want to spoil it. Yeah, just gonna tip a little bit off. So it's almost spoiled like a paste. Yeah, so it's actually gone to a complete sloppy mess and that allows all the particles to be as soft or as wet as they can possibly be. And what I'll actually do, I'll leave that and I'll show you in 15 minutes time when I come to it, I'll just be able to rough it up and I'll be able to turn it into a ground bait. It's the only ground bait you can do that with is a crushed expander ground bait because it soaks up so much of the water that you put in and all the uh, particles in it. It'll take in that moisture, but they will dry out, I promise. It's worth having a little go. But if you're unsure, go with the little and often approach, but you'll have to put quite a bit of water in if you're going to do that. So, like I say, I've got my two baits, really simple for feed. I've got my micros and my expanders, uh, my micros and my uh, ground bait. That is all I'm ever going to need to feed my bait in the two different ways that I want to put it in, either in a little tiny ball form or sprinkling my bait in. Those, those two baits give me the versatility of two options to introduce two different um, piles, if you like, or forms of attraction into my peg. So the only thing to accompany them, which I'm not really going to go in depth about, is expander pellets. I, I, I'm not a big fan of expander pellets, if I'm honest, for, for a few reasons that I'll talk about when we're actually fishing but the, the, probably the only pellet that you can use in conjunction with a, a soft micro pellet is a, a little expander pellet on the yuck. So I've done myself in there, I've done myself some three mil and some four mil expander pellets, and I've literally just put some in a bag, cover them in water, just squeeze the water out and turn the bag so there's no actually excess water in it, and I've left them to soften up this morning before I left. And then when it comes to use them, I've got my bowl of water, I'll just put some expanders in the bowl, squeeze them, and then they'll sink, and I can put them on the yuck. But so there's a few issues I have with expanders, mainly that... Um, they're very, very difficult to get them to register on your float, which is something I find really, really, really important. So sometimes I'll have to use something different, some soft feed pellets, but we'll talk about them in a little while. But for now, um, in fact, no, let me touch a bit more on bait just before we go. In fact, no, there's not a lot to talk about. So we've got some plain boring maggots as well for me maggot fishing. I'm not a big fan of having all fancy different colours of maggots. I tend to go with white ones if I'm going to fish shallow, and I go with red ones if I'm going to fish on deck. So the only addition to me maggot fishing that I may possibly have that I've got a a sneaky bag of somewhere in my bag is a little scoop of disco pinkies, some fluoro pinkies that I'll use sometimes as a hook bait. But I've been thinking about that a lot recently about using a, a different hook bait to what I'm feeding. And I definitely feel that it's all, it's about a confidence thing more than anything. If you want to choose a different color of maggots, it's entirely up to you, a maggot to maggot. But I just like keeping them really simple, nice plain red maggots, and they do me for all my on the deck um, winter fishing for F1s or even a bit of dobbing. So, with that done, I'm going to make up some rigs and we're going to go on to the next bit.